In this first video for grade 9 algebraic expressions, we're going to have a look at the general algebra that you learned in grade 8. We're going to start off with the algebra terminology that you already know. Terms are separated by pluses and minuses, so by addition and subtraction. Any multiplication or division forms one term. So a term can consist of a sign, which is a plus or a minus, then a number, which is multiplied or divided to letters. For the numbers, we use the term constant because their value stays constant. And for letters, we use the term variables because their value can change. Another new word that we are going to use is the word coefficient. Coefficient consists of everything that is multiplied or divided to a specific variable. So if we, for example, look at a term like minus 7x squared, and I ask you, what is the coefficient of x squared? It will be the sine, the minus, and the 7 that is multiplied to x squared. When it comes to adding and subtracting algebraic expressions, it is important to know that you can only add and subtract like terms. Like terms are terms that have exactly the same variables. This means that the letter as well as its exponent should be the same. Example 1. Simplify. Here we have four different terms, and of these terms, the 7x squared and minus 5x squared are like terms because they have exactly the same variable. And then minus 10x and plus 3x are also like terms. To simplify, I'm going to add up the like terms. This means I need to determine how many x squares we have. Note that I do not change the variable. I focus on the coefficients, so I take 7 and minus 5 and add them up. And 7 minus 5 gives us 2 x squares. Now I want to determine how many x terms we have, and for that I look at the coefficients of the x terms. So I take minus 10 and plus 3 and add them up. Minus 10 plus 3 is minus 7x. This is our final answer because these two terms are not like terms. In B, again we have four terms, and the first term and third term are like terms because both have the variable x times y times z. And if you look closely, you will see that the second term and the fourth term are also like terms because both of them have the variables x times y. This is why it's important to remember that in algebra, we prefer to always write variables in alphabetical order. Because if you do that with the second term, you will have 12xy, which makes it a like term with the fourth term. So when I now start simplifying, I will focus on my x, y, z terms by looking at their coefficients. So that will be minus 20 minus another 3, which will give me minus 23 x, y, z. Now I want to determine the number of x, y terms, and for that I use the coefficients of x, y, which is plus 12 plus another 5. This will give me 17 x, y terms. When it comes to multiplication and division of algebraic expressions, we already have one term. So, here we need to determine the final sign, simplify the constant value, and the variables. For the sign, you need to remember that two of the same sign, so a plus times a plus, or a minus times a minus, will always give you a positive sign and multiplying two different signs will always give you a negative value. For the constant value, you are going to multiply and divide as normal, and to simplify the variables, you're going to use your exponential laws. 
Example 2. Simplify. Here we have one term that is multiplied, so we need to determine the final sign, constant and variables. For the sign, we have a minus times a plus, which will give us a negative value. And for the constant, we have 4 multiplied by 6, and that is 24. And lastly, we have a look at the variables. For the x's, we have x to the power of 2 times x to the power of 1. And when using my exponential laws, I will add the exponents to get x to the power of 3. For the variable y, we have a power of 3 and a power of 4, which will give us y to the power of 7. Even though b now has a bracket, it still implies multiplication. So we start with our sign, which is a plus times a plus, and that will give us a positive value. Next, we continue with the constant value, which is 8 times 2, and that will give us 16. Moving on to the variables, we have x to the power of 1 and x to the power of 5, and using the law, we will have x to the power of 6. There is only a y to the power of 5, so that will stay exactly the same. In C, you now also need to remember your third and fourth exponential laws, and firstly know that the exponent on the outside has to be applied to every base on the inside. So starting off with the minus 4, the sign will be a negative value because we have an odd number of minuses being multiplied. Then we have 4 to the power of 3 as our constant value, and that is 64. And for the variable, we now have x to the power of 5 raised to another power of 3. And our exponential law here states that we then multiply those two exponents to get x to the power of 15. In example 3, we are now going to divide. But still, we need to simplify the sign, the constant, and the variables. In this case, we have a plus divided by a plus, which is positive. And for the constant, we have 30 divided by 10, and that will give us a constant of 3. Lastly, we need to simplify the variables. For the variable of x, we're going to use our exponential law, which states that when we divide, we take the exponents and we subtract them to get x to the power of 4. The same happens with the variable y, where we have the exponents 2 and 1, and when we subtract them, we end with y to the power of 1. In example b, we are still dividing, and I'm going to start off with the sign, which is a plus divided by a minus, and that is a negative value. If I now move on to my constant, you will see that 3 cannot be divided by 12, but it can be simplified. So I'm going to divide the top and bottom by 3 to end with a quarter. When we get to the variables, it is important to see that we have only two x's in the numerator and seven in the denominator. That means the x's that are left over will be in the denominator, and for that we then subtract in the opposite direction, saying 7 minus 2 to get x to the power of 5 in the denominator. This method helps to ensure that you always give your answers with positive exponents. Lastly, we have y to the power of 5 divided by y to the power of 5, and anything divided by itself is 1. You could have also used your exponential laws and said y to the power of 0, but I'm reminding you that you also learned in grade 8 that anything to the power of 0 is 1, so we could have left out the y to the power of 0. In example C, we now have two terms in the numerator. And then that big division line acts as a bracket, indicating that we should actually first simplify the numerator. Here we cannot subtract the two terms because they are not like terms. In this case, you will now break 
the whole expression up into two terms, giving each of those terms their own denominator. So we'll have 15x to the power 5 over 5x squared minus 10x to the power 3 also on 5x squared. In this way, we can simplify each term individually. The first term here is positive and 15 divided by 5 is 3. For the variable, we have the exponent of 5 minus 2, which is x to the power of 3. For the second term, we have a minus divided by a plus, which will give us a negative value. The constant is 10 divided by 5, so that will give us 2. And for the variable, we have 3 minus 2, which is x to the power of 1. In the next video, we're going to have a look at the first part of the grade 9 algebraic expressions. If you feel like you need more revision on the first part that we did, you can follow the link in the description to go back to the grade 8 algebra.